let's look at a scary equation. In the last video, we rearranged this to be y equals 2 times x minus 4 minus 2 divided by 4. Now we have y on its own. Yay. Time to solve the equation. We can solve it straight away, but in most cases you'll be given a value for x. Let's say that x equals 9. Then we can find out what y would equal when x is 9. We solve equations by doing operations in the order bed mass. We start with brackets, and the key is to do the inner brackets first. 9 minus 4 equals 5. Then the outer set of brackets, using our new value of 5 for the inner brackets. We have both multiply by 2 and subtract 2 in the outer brackets. Which first? In bed mass, multiplication comes before subtraction. So 2 times 5 is 10, great. And then 10 minus 2 equals 8. So the top part of our fraction is equal to 8. Awesome. Those brackets are all done. Now we just have to divide. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. Fantastic. So when x equals 9, y equals 2. We did it. Go back and try it with a different number for x. Equalities are all those sentences with an equal sign. Inequalities are those ones with the greater than sign, greater than and equal to, less than, and less than and equal to. These symbols sit in the same spot as an equal sign. Solving inequalities is much the same as solving equalities. We still try to get our unknown, such as x, over to the left hand side and everything else on the right. We can add or subtract from both sides. We can multiply or divide both sides by a positive number. But when we multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, we have to flip the inequality sign around. Lastly, and this should be obvious, if we flip the entire inequality around, we have to remember to flip the sign as well, so that it still says the same thing. So inequalities are basically the same as equations. Except when we multiply or divide by a negative number, we flip that inequality sign. Simple. How do you feel about solving exponentials? Sometimes we'll get something like this. How do we undo that square? With a square root, of course. So square rooting both sides, we have x equals the square root of 16. So what number times itself equals 16? 4, right? 4 times 4 equals 16. But here's a trick. Negative 4 times negative 4 also equals 16. What do? No need to freak out. Both positive 4 and negative 4 are correct values for x. We need to make sure we write both of them down. We can write them like this. x equals positive and negative 4. It's important to realize that, in this case with the square root, there are two values for x. The other way around is a lot easier. Say we've got the square root of x equals 4. How do we undo that square root? By squaring both sides, of course. So x equals 4 squared. And what is 4 squared equal? 4 squared equals 4 times 4 equals 16. Positive all the way. Notice how if we were asked to solve square root of x equals negative 4, we would square both sides. And because we're squaring the entirety of both sides, the negative symbol of the negative 4 is included in the square. So when in doubt, use brackets. Brackets never fails. What's negative 4 squared? Well, that's just negative 4 times negative 4, which is positive 16. The same answer as before. There's a couple of last tricks about exponents, and these are important to remember. x to the power of a times x to the power of b equals x to the power of a plus b. So x squared times x cubed equals x to the power of 2 plus 3 equals x to the power of 5. This is why x times x equals x squared, because it's secretly x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1, which is x to the power of 1 plus 1, which is x to the power of 2. Also, 1 over x is the same as x to the power of negative 1. The negative here means it's the reciprocal of x to the power of 1. This might make more sense this way. x to the power of negative 2 
equals 1 over x to the power of 2, and vice versa. And so lastly, x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b equals x to the power of a minus b. It's just the opposite of multiplying x's. So, x to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 2 equals x to the power of 3 minus 2 which also equals x to the power of 3 times x to the power of negative 2, because 1 over x squared is the same as x to the power of negative 2. And x to the power of 3 times x to the power of negative 2 equals x to the power of 3 plus negative 2. And so all of these, luckily, equal the same thing, x to the power of 1, or just x. And here's a fun fact. Any number and I mean any number to the power of zero equals one.